Without culture significance, credits and theme songs I command the eyes of a high street of a happier time One which thrives both socially and commercially Or at night I sleep peacefully Falling back to the comfort of knowing my job secure And the keys and gold for employment Or I love thy neighbours We appreciate together the pleasure Of breathing in the air for freshman With 400 in pencil and mattress Not to a death to his partner But no zero hours, no CVs And no fucking job fairs I could carry on Come on and hit me with tax And double figures, double figures And let the country collapse In a pieces, in a pieces I find spam misogyny and dies of pounds. I indulge myself in the relative inflationary costs of demand side management. And for every minute that I wait here, I appreciate God for the bitch. Interest rate low made available to me, but a credit rating that is frankly above average. Or I simply cannot complain as a rebel in the ease of modern life. Facilitated by the raw power of the canopy and the walls of the new houses. But every day I commend myself to save a value. And if it's necessary, the regime will be to love, care, and to invest. Come on and hit me with tax In double figures, double figures And let the country collapse In a pieces, in a pieces You make me wanna go back To the 1970s
White shirts, blue shirts, spaces and places White shirts, clean shirts, oh Rent big and got small I don't care at all Got up to fall I don't care at all What pub makes school What pub makes school Oh, they learn to rule They learn to rule Look at state school Look at state school Oh, they learn to They learn to fall If it's wide enough And it's clean enough It's here Spaces and places White shirts, clean shirts Spaces and places White shirts, clean shirts, spaces and places White shirts, clean shirts, spaces and places Picture it up for free, nah, -uh. you break it. 
And you're from Bristol. We were from Bristol. You were, about because the home counties are situated somewhere else, I guess. Around London, oh, yeah. the home counties, seven home counties. That's where we we're originally from. Oh, we yeah. were all born in different counties around London. But um, we formed in Bristol about three years ago when we were at university. And um, yeah, and then, but now we've moved to London. And what brought you? Uh, obviously, the university brought you to Bristol. What were you studying? Oh, I was studying history. Um, Connor, our other guitarist, was studying sound engineering. And um, actually, so that the core of the band formed in Bristol, but then myself and the kind of synth player, uh, we met at York, the University of York. Yes, York. So we went there. But like it's like Will said, we're all originally from like Buckinghamshire and Hertfordshire area. So the band kind of had its genesis in Bristol, but then we came from York. And uh, I suppose I did like maths and computer science and bonded. Uh, politics and mm. economics and philosophy. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you were pursuing an academic career first. Sort of. Well, we've always been doing it. Like um, me and the drummer have been in a band together since we were about 10 years old. Oh, gee. So we've been playing. There's some horrific <laughs> videos on YouTube of us doing Sweet Child of Mine and um, guns, yeah, other Guns N' Roses covers. But um, yeah, we've been, we've all, and you've been in bands for years. And it's yeah. all just sort of over the last couple of years merged together. And yeah, solidified as home counties. Yes. Yeah. How would you describe the music? It's it's uh, obviously there is a little post punk vibe to it, but there is also some synth influences on there. Yeah, eighties a- sometimes. Yeah. Very eighties, I think. Yeah. It's over time. It's kind of taken a lot of different directions, but I suppose, like you say, we take a lot of influence from a lot of eighties post punk bands like the Heads, Talking Heads, obviously. Yeah. But then also, I think you can't help but pay attention to what other people in the music and you know scene are doing at the moment so i feel like we've we've kind of you know put our ear to the ground or whatever and listen to like a lot of that what else is going on kind of you know taking and taking and taking what we like and discarding what we don't also a lot of like revisiting a lot of the 2000s music which we sort of yeah. disregarded as you know it's become very unpopular like <laughs> landfill indie or whatever yeah. like the throw around phrase but like Listening to like LCD Sound System and um, Franz Ferdinand and bands okay. like that. There's so many great bands from that time. Yeah. Some not so. But what good, I find very interesting about your music is it's not only driven by anger or by social issues. It's also a lot of humor in there. I think. Yeah, we're not. I, we're not really like a serious post-punk sort no. of no. lyric. Like, I, there's a lot of anger, like especially like post-Brexit sort of um, punk bands oh, are writing quite like viscerally about that sort of thing but we're more of it how um, did traveling go because you you were touring uh, traveling in times of brexit so, yeah, so the last tour we've been on at the moment has been national but okay. every when we have come over to play in europe you you know the complications and the paperwork are you know it's it's a media mm. you, see, you know you really f- literally see the effects of of you know the results of brexit and they're, they're all adverse there's no, there's no, there's been no benefit to us. No, no. we can't sell any merch. And no. what was the other thing? You, it was, there was a, some rule about you can only you have to declare all your equipment unless you can carry it. Yeah. By on foot over the border, <laughs> yeah. which we haven't been asked to do yet. But yeah. but but what type of venues are you playing in the UK? Is it is it com- could you compare it to something like the music today that that you are here today? Um. So this last. Uh, typically, we've been playing small grassroots venues, so this, especially in February. We did our main kind of uh, headline tour after d- dropping our last EP. Yeah. So that's kind of the size that we've been used to. I suppose we play at generally bigger venues in London, in our hometown, you know, the place we're based now. But um, this last tour, we've been touring with this band called the Psychedelic Porn Crumpets, and they've, they're have they doing really well. So this has been, uh, we've kind of been holidaying and playing these much bigger venues than we uh, were typically used to. So that the last for the last three weeks have been like. Especially, yeah, the day before we came to um, the Netherlands, we played at Electric Brixton, which is like a 1,500 cap venue, which is like crazy com- considering what we're used to. That was a bit overwhelming. But um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a bit of a learning curve playing on those bigger stages. I yeah. think it's very different sound and feeling and trying to adjust to it. Are you more of a live band or more of a studio band? What would you consider yourself to be? That's a good question. I think that it's interesting that when you're in the studio, you you kind of end up think. I think you end up thinking about the band in two different ways. One, when you're like in the studio writing, uh, and then the second one, which is when you're trying to manifest that live. And I suppose like 
our songs always start in the studio, so we're, we're quite comfortable there. But then I suppose, at least for me, they don't really, they don't feel like our songs until we've really played them live. So I think like... They grow. Yeah, they grow. And like, I think developing ourselves as a live band has been always a kind of a, pri not a priority, but definitely central. Mm -hmm. Because like Will said that he's been in, him and some of the other members have been in bands for 10 years. And uh, listening to that kind of music was always very like live centered. It's one of the big things from COVID. It's like we, the stuff we started writing over COVID, all this, we got really into the synths and I got bought like this old synth and got experimental with that. And we made a few singles, which were like very synth heavy. And we came into the live room after COVID and we're like, how do we play this? Yeah. Yeah. Like impossible. But so that's been another learning curve. It's like, learning it again. and now I feel like the stuff we're working on now, it, it has a better sort of relationship between the live and the studio. We know how it's going to work live when we're writing rather than sort of this shot in the dark. Not, yeah. no, and and no how idea. does the process work? Does it, do you bring in songs yourself is it, or does everybody bring in new material? It definitely, it's kind of changed over time with each kind of release. Because I suppose at the beginning, just because it was over COVID and we were all completely disconnected from each other, it would start with I mainly Will coming, you know, coming up with an idea and then having to like de develop that basically on his own or with the help of Connor as well because of you know there was just like no one else could literally get to the studio but then more recently it's still kind of like either will or kind of will kind of develop this like sapling of an idea but the last few songs have like that they begin like that but then we all work on them together i think we've kind of quite quickly realized what everyone has to offer and like different ideas that people are coming up with and it would seem like counterproductive to kind of go back to a period where only one person was writing everything are you are you full-time musicians all no not at all <laughs> no? <laughs> we um I'm at, i work in a school so i'm actually on my summer holidays mm -hmm. so i've had sort of like six weeks off the others have been working through touring also yes also work. Is, yeah, yeah yeah um yeah but it's surprising it's been a fun challenge i suppose trying to negotiate both but i think actually we've managed these last month of shows we've managed to negotiate both pretty well are you going to record a new album soon? Is there something coming? That up? is the plan, yeah. We've got I've, we've got quite a few songs together now which are sort of shaping into an album. We've done two EPs. I think it's about time. Yeah. There were a couple of songs that I heard that I didn't see on your on, on the list so far. Um, yeah, those uh, two of them are completely new. I, yeah, two of them are yeah. pretty new. Well, one of them, um, You Break Your Boy, has been in the set for m maybe nearly a year now. Since February. Since, was that only February? Yeah. But... Um, and then the other one we literally wrote about a week before coming out on tour. And what was that? What song was That's that? That's the second song was, um, it's called Cradle to Coffin at the moment. Oh, I, I, I love that. Although the lyrics change. Oh, yes. at the moment. It's, it's funny doing, like, yeah, it's a bit of risky playing that sort of song in a live session because it might be very different. Although it's quite nice to um, capture the early. Um, yeah, it's funny how we, I think it's just inevitably, this, as, the, you, as you play the songs live, they just, you know, change over time and they kind of get bashed into shape. Yeah. And that one's still quite early on in the, you know, bashing process. So like uh, when we come to record it, it might sound quite a bit different. But the bashing concerns the lyrical part, I would say. Not the lyri lyrical part, only the... The lyrics don't the lyrics tend don't to change, change too much. I get, oh. I get quite stuck on the lyric. Well, like, I, go, oh, yeah. I write the lyrics down, I'm like, I'm going to change that later. Yeah. And then you come back to it and you're like... No, that's the one. And where do you find your material? Do you just steal everywhere? Everywhere you go, you find a line you can use? Um, yes, yeah, sort Something of. Like yeah, it's, it's usually about like funny things which have some for some something someone said or like which sounds a bit peculiar and how we can <laughs> fit that into some sort of social comment. Yeah, and it's and I think what's one of the pains about it is that as soon as you start play, you start, as soon as you start singing a lyric, and it fits, and you like it enough it's basically impossible to change it yeah. because you can't after a while you just can't imagine the song no. any different so i think like there's a there's certainly a lot of lyrics that we have which are like we <laughs> you know they're there and but we can't change them because it just wouldn't be the same song it wouldn't be the song we liked i yeah i feel like you, you can only work on a song so like in a certain time frame lyrically without it sort of losing its meaning of how what the song originally was intended for and i also think even if a lyric's maybe not the strongest lyric, it is in black. It's like emblematic of the song yeah. and of that period. And yeah, but does does home counties have a signature song? Well, it's funny you say that because actually the 
the last EP, we had a song called The Home Counties. And that's the song we typically open the set with. So it's kind of doubled as this nice introduction uh, to the, you know, the, the band. And, and musically, it's probably quite like captures what Home Counties is like with the synth synthesizers and the, and the, lyrics. the lyrics. Yeah, they're very us. But um, I think our signature song really is Back to the 70s off our last EP. That's the one which every set, that's what gets everyone going. And that's when we start really getting into this, our stride. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It'd be, it's fun we did that like home county song though, because it's, you know, like the monkeys, whatever, have like their own theme song. Yeah. So it'd be fun to like, I don't know, we could just keep churning out theme songs for the band. <laughs> that's, 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 that's very good if you can do that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I wish you all the best and uh, yeah, good luck later on. Thank you very much. We keep much. on following you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>